Recently, I was having a discussion with a non-technical uh, health uh, care startup founder about what is regular computing, what is AI, and what is what we generally know right now today, generative AI. So before we jump into explaining artificial intelligence, let's first start with a basic differentiation about why AI technologies are so different than what companies and startups have been doing over the past couple of decades. The start of computing was all about telling a machine exactly what you wanted to do using algorithms. Algorithms, they were well-defined procedures that would be telling a computer how to make a particular action happen. With an algorithm, a computer follows a specific series of commands that will get them to do or produce an output exactly what you want. This technological advancement had game-changing effects. For example, how do you tell a regular computer algorithm to understand what is inside of a picture? There are too many variations in photographs, even when each photo is taken of the same item. Or how about writing a computer algorithm to understand the voice of a human? For a computer to understand language and speech, there's so many different things happening. But the algorithms in artificial intelligence or AI, they are different from these other past algorithms. Because instead of telling a computer what to do, it tells a computer how to learn. And AI algorithm on its own can't do anything. AI basically needs a specialized algorithm with large data sets. For example, Google Translate. Before AI, Google programmed their language translation applications using traditional algorithms and they had to feed their code with over 50,000 lines of code to actually get that to work. But then along came the field of machine learning. And instead of walking the machine step by step through a translation process, Google can now teach a machine how to translate. So by updating Google Translate's technology to AI, the application now only needed around 500 lines of code and machine learning is a term used to describe technologies that perform cognitive tasks that only normally humans could perform. The problem with this definition is that it means that most of what machines can do can now be considered AI. After all, humans were once the only things capable of making mathematical calculations. But many years later, machines were also able to outdo us in this field as well. So instead, Another way to think about artificial intelligence is thinking about machines that can mimic the problem solving and learning skills that humans have. The key here in the definition is the learning component of AI. Yes, your calculator can solve mathematical problems, but it's not able to learn how to do it. It must be told exactly how to do it by the human that programmed it. But this was all traditional AI. So despite its effectiveness in performing tasks, traditional AI has notable limitations. It relies heavily on human intervention, making handling complex and dynamic scenarios largely impractical. A writing rules for every possible situation becomes unimaginable as the complexity of the task increases. So basically, traditional AI cannot learn and evolve autonomously, whereas Generative AI, which we are going to talk about right now, takes the lead in what we are doing and what we are seeing these days. So generative AI operates on an entirely different paradigm. It leverages machine learning techniques such as neural networks to learn from vast amounts of data and generate new content autonomously. And because of this, generative AI can be applied in different applications that stretch to various domains and industries. It has revolutionized music composition, text, script generation, and even art creation. For example, generative AI can produce photorealistic images from just textual descriptions. You can type in what you want it to produce and it will produce it for you. The adaptability and creativity of generative AI stems from its ability to learn patterns from data without explicit programming. So moreover, generative AI can adapt to new data and situations without continually needing human intervention. And today, AI includes many fields of study such as computer vision, which is how computers can recognize images the way humans can, natural language processing or NLP and how computers can read the way humans can. And now robotics is coming in, how machines can move the way humans can. If you want to actually get to know more about some more specific types of AI, there are three types of AI in general. The first is 
artificial narrow intelligence, sometimes referred to as weak AI. But there's nothing actually weak about it. It's AI that can match human performance in one specific domain, such as image recognition. The second is artificial general intelligence, sometimes referred to as strong AI or AGI. And this is an AI that can match a human's overall intelligence across multiple domains. But take for example, in 2017, Google launched Alpha Zero. It's a single system that taught itself from scratch how to master the game of chess, shogi, and go. And it beat the world championship program in each case. But the next one is artificial super intelligence. This is what is usually thought of when you're looking at a movie where you have robots who have all the skills of humans. It does not technically exist today, although you can think about it. But so now you know the ins and outs of what is AI, what is regular computing, what is traditional artificial intelligence, and what is generative AI. I'm Dr. Omar Khan. I hope this was interesting. I'll talk to you guys soon.